Welcome to another weekend vlog. I hope you are doing well. It is a beautiful sunny March day here and even though it is really really cold today and it has been all week, we are supposed to be getting really nice weather next week so I'm very excited. I'm feeling like spring is around the corner even though I know we're not done with winter yet. We are in Canada but I'm really excited and I have a lot of knitting that I wanted to share. Not that I've been knitting a ton, but I have lots of knitting projects to share with you and favorite things. And I just thought it would be really fun to catch up a little bit and share some of those things with you today. I have lots of knitting that I wanna share with you. So I thought I would set up in the old school, traditional podcast style so that I can use both hands. I have bags lined up all in front of me and I'm really excited to share some new stuff that I've been thinking about. So I have been trying to spend a little bit more time each day knitting and I'm really enjoying that. I've got really simple projects. I have a sock head hat in my sewing room here and throughout the day, if I need a little bit of a break, um, I can just pick it up and knit a few quick rows without thinking. And I've also been mostly knitting on a sock lately and it's just an easy vanilla sock and I'm really enjoying it. So I've actually made quite a bit of progress and finished the first one. This is a basic vanilla sock. The recipe that I use for this is uh, Susan B. Anderson's How I Make My Socks. It's how I make most of my socks now. It is just a 64 stitch cast on with 2.25 millimeter needles. I used Knit Pro Zing DPNs for this one. And I just made it a shorty sock so that I can wear it with ankle boots or my short rubber boots. And I really love it. So from the top to the top of the heel flap is about four inches. And I just knit the rib I don't even count until I do go to do the second one. I just do whatever I feel like looks good. And I'm in love with this yarn. So I've shared it a few times, but this is my Legacy Fiber Arts, the Cozy Toes base. And this color is Woodland Shenanigans. It is so pretty. And I'm using this contrast yarn for the heels. It is a Chelsea Lux yarn, and it was a mini from a previous advent. It's a beautiful golden rusty color, and I think it looks so pretty together. So I have been making lots of progress. I finished the first one, and I'm on to the second one. Those are the DPNs that I've been using, and I have a cute little progress keeper from the Gnome Knitter. And I think I'm about four inches in, so I'm probably ready to put the heel flap in for this one and I'm so happy about that. So I really love this project. I can't wait to wear them. And it's been a really enjoyable knit. I think I am finally getting back into sock knitting again because I haven't really felt like knitting too many socks lately or since Christmas. So the next work in progress is in one of my large project bags and I pulled this old one out. Well, it's been out all along, but I actually just pulled it out of my basket to do a little bit of work on because this is one of my favorites, but it's been on my needles for a very long time. It is the Gradient Cowl 
from Pearl Soho. And I feel like I finally got past that halfway mark, which was a bit of a struggle. And now I'm just picking it up and working on it whenever I can. So it starts out, it was a kit. It is uh, a kit from Pearl Soho. I think it was called the Grapefruit Kit. And I started with the bright pink. And then the halfway mark is where the bright yellow is in the center here. And now I'm just working backwards and doing the same thing again. So I'm making a little bit of progress. I picked it up a week or two ago and I've done another inch on it. And it is just a really basic moss stitch or seed stitch, whichever you want to call it. And so this is my TV knitting. I keep it in the family room and it's really, really cozy and beautiful and I would love to finish it this year. So this is my little, not so little whip that is sitting. And whenever I feel like it, I just pick it up and do a couple of rows. And the reason I picked this up again is because there was another Pearl Soho project that I really wanted to cast on and it's quite large. And I told myself I wouldn't cast it on until my gradient cowl was done, but I caved and I cast on anyways. But I've got this one in my Plum Town bag, which is from Fringe Supply Company, and they don't make them anymore, unfortunately. And this project in here is the Half and Half Triangle Wrap, again by Pearl Soho. So I've picked out my colors of Linen Quill from Pearl Soho. And I don't think I have the, oh, I do have them here, the color names. So these are the colors that I chose for my wrap. I'm making the large one. I'm pretty sure that this is called Purple Smoke. And this one is Dark Iris. I love purples and plums, and so I just cast it on and knit maybe two rows, one or two. So as you can see, it is super long. I can't remember how many stitches it took to cast this on. I have a cute little progress keeper on there, and I'm pretty sure that this one was from Sucre Sucre Miniatures. It's really pretty. And I've just kind of left it. I cast it on knowing that it will be there when I am ready for it. And I don't enjoy casting on, especially so many stitches. So I just kind of did it one day so that it would be ready for me whenever I was ready. So let's see, I have a few more here. So I have been thinking about sweater knitting for a while, ever since I finished my um, Felix pullover in December, but I've been really slow to cast on another one. I just wanted to be sure and ready for whatever. And I decided to pull out this old project. I'm pretty sure I've shared it, but I've got my bag ready for it again. It is um, the Camaro sweater from Tannis Fiber Arts. I had this kit and I had this sweater cast on a couple of years ago and I put it aside, ripped it out because I had made a few mistakes, but I've got it all set up in one of my small leather tote bags in the mustard color and I have all of the yarn ready to go in there. I don't know the names of them because I had purchased a kit from Tannis Fiber Arts and it's basically the one, I believe it's the one that's on her Ravelry page that she's wearing. This is the main color for the body. And then I have the rainbow of all of the other colors that go into the yoke. So I'm really excited about this one. I've got everything I need in here. I have my needles, my pattern, my yarn. I even have another project bag so that when I have the sweater, cast on, I can pop it in there and just leave it in the tote bag. So it's sort of a, I can grab the sweater and go if I want, but everything is nicely tucked away in there. 
in the meantime, I have another sweater that I am ready to cast on that I am so excited about and I've been thinking about for over a month. I really wanted to participate in the festive sweater make along with Chelsea from the Chelsea Makes Patreon, who is Chelsea from Legacy Fiber Arts. And it turns out that Molly from a homespun house is sort of co-hosting this make along with her. And the idea was for the rest of the year to work on a festive sweater for the next holiday season. So I took some time and I've been researching what sweater I might want to cast on. And I think I really wanted to do this because I love colorful color work sweaters, but they don't always fit into my wardrobe. And so I thought, how perfect would it be to have a really colorful festive sweater so there's a purpose for it and it would just be fun. And I just loved the idea of it. And the fact that there is a lot of time to work on it was also a big plus for me. So I've decided to knit the Stagecoach sweater from Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks. I don't wanna to show too much of that pattern because there's a lot of information on there but I looked on Ravelry for quite a while and I landed on this one because I thought it was really beautiful and it was DK weight and so then I started to research what I could use for it and I think I found the perfect combination so for the body I've decided to use the Harrisville designs um, I think this is a Cormo. I don't think I have a ball band here. Oh, I do. It's American Cormo and Wool, DK Weight. This is the Daylights Collection. And the color I chose is Bloodshot. So you can probably see some flecks of red in there, which I thought would be perfect for a holiday sweater. Very festive. I'm in love with this yarn. I think it's going to be beautiful. And then the fun part was picking out what three colors I'd be using in the pattern and the color work. And it was all online shopping because everything has been basically closed around me. But I went to the Tennis Fiber Arts website and I found some beautiful colors of her Pure Wash DK. And so these are the three colors that I will be using. I think they are beautiful and festive, but not too crazy. So this is chartreuse. This is garnet. And this is rose gray. So I think they're going to make a beautiful color work sweater and I have my bag all set up for this too. I've decided to put it in this beautiful bag that was sent to me by my friend Catherine from Bed of Roses. She is a beautiful maker and it is a gorgeous bag and I love the polka dots and even though it's somewhat festive I felt like it would be perfect to use all year without it being too Christmassy. So Catherine makes gorgeous bags. She has this little leather pull on the zipper and a little charm there. I really love this bag and I think it's going to be perfect for this project. I also have something at the end of this. I'm doing a little giveaway and I have something from Catherine that I'm including in the giveaway that I'm really excited about. So that is going to be my stagecoach sweater. I think I just need to get the needles. I have my pattern and my yarn all ready to go in this bag. And I feel like as soon as I do my next shop update, because I'm at the end of putting in zippers and then they'll be pressing and packaging and posting and all of that. Once that kind of settles down, I will be casting on one or both of those sweaters and I cannot wait. I'm really excited about it. And because I am on my second sock, 
in the Legacy Fiber Arts shorty sock that I shared. I've already picked out my next sock. I've popped it into this cute little bento style bag that I got. Um, it was actually a gift with purchase when you make your first purchase um, with Merit Cosmetics. And I've been really enjoying their makeup and I had placed an order with them on their website. And I was so excited about this bag because I thought it would make the perfect sock knitting bag. So in here, I have my next sock. It is Chelsea Lux Yarns. It is one of the Coop Collection sock yarns. And this one is Margaret. So Christina from Chelsea Yarns has this beautiful Coop Collection that she does. And um, it's a special collection and it is based on one of the chickens in their coop. And I love it. It is such a fun surprise each month. And I love this one. It was really hard to choose. I have three of them. And I decided on Margaret because it is so beautiful. And I think I was just craving something kind of somewhat neutral. And I love the brown, but that pop of purple in there, so fun. So this is going to be my next sock and I've got my needles here. I'm going to do this one, Magic Loop. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to do this with the Magic Heel from Autumn and Acorn again. I love that heel. It's just a no brainer. It's fun, it's easy. And I didn't wanna break up this beautiful color. I thought this would be a really good one not to have any contrast heels, toes or cuffs or anything like that. So that is going to be one of my next cast-ons. I'm really excited about all of my projects right now. And just having them ready has made me very, very content. And I'm not rushing to cast on the sweaters, but I like having them there. And just knowing that I can cast on when I'm ready is just what I crave right now. So I wanted to do a little giveaway because in the last few months I reached the 15,000 subscriber mark on my YouTube channel and it kind of blew me away and I've been so excited about it but I just haven't gotten around to organizing any kind of giveaway. So I think what I'm going to do is um, post a thread on my Ravelry page and I will put um, all the information down below of where you can find me. I'm on Instagram. I have a website for my shop. Um, I have uh, a podcast group on Ravelry that you can check out and I will put that down below. And if you go to that group on Ravelry, I will have a post that will be called something like 15,000 giveaway. And just leave me a comment there. It doesn't matter what just a hello, um, a little comment, and I will give it a week or two maybe just to give people time to enter it. And at the end of maybe two weeks, I will draw a random winner from there for a little prize that I've put together. Um, I have decided to give away something from me, some yarn, and this beautiful necklace that Catherine donated to the podcast from Bed of Roses. I'm super excited. This is a really fun prize. So the necklace from Catherine is in here. I really do not want to take it out because it is packaged so beautifully, but I will show you one of mine to give you an idea of what will be in here. Catherine not only makes beautiful project bags, but she has these gorgeous necklaces. And that I think that's how I originally found her a year or two ago on Instagram. She has these beautiful necklaces on a leather cord. They are so beautiful. They have this ring on the end with a large selection of progress keepers. Now, I actually don't even take them off. You could but I just think they make such a beautiful necklace that I leave them on the necklace and I have, I think I have three now. 
and she has these beautiful charms that, I don't know, there's stones, um, there's usually a theme to it. This one has a beautiful bird, a key, an acorn, a flower. It looks like rose quartz, I'm not too sure. And she stamped these ones for me with my initial. So it could be a different color cord and there will be probably different charms, but every single one of her pieces is unique. It's a work of art. And I think she is such a talented maker. And we did a little swap over Vlogmas. If you saw, we exchanged packages and she sent me this beautiful necklace and the bag. And she was so generous to donate a necklace for a giveaway. So I am going to include this in the draw. It says on here that um, it is for a giveaway and it is stamped with a heart. So that will be in the giveaway. I've also decided to include one of my small leather pouches. So this is a little pouch, it's called the signature pouch. It is black. I think it's perfect for notions or for stationery. I, I use them for both. I have one with my knitting notions in it. And I also use this for um, my planner pens or fountain pens. And it is really nice size to just kind of pop into a tote bag or a big project bag and keep all of your little necessities in it. So the third thing I am donating is a beautiful skein of yarn that I purchased quite a while ago for myself, but I haven't gotten around to casting on anything with it. And I thought it would be a beautiful part of this giveaway. It is from Coloring Book Yarns. And I know these are sometimes hard to get, so I thought it would be really fun to share this. It is in the color Be Mine, which was Valentine's inspired. And it is a fingering weight, self-striping yarn. And I've used coloring book yarns for socks before. It is beautiful to work with and gorgeous colors. So I thought that this would be a really nice way to say thank you to all of you or to one of you, but to offer this to one of you as a thank you for subscribing and being a part of this channel and this community for however long you've been here. I've been so thankful to have this space and this community and watch it grow. And I just wanted to give back a little bit of thanks. While I'm on the topic of how thankful I am for all of you here, I thought it would be a good time to touch on my Patreon account and what that means for this channel. I've been getting quite a few DMs and seeing questions and comments on my Instagram and YouTube asking when my next video will be, where I am, if I'm coming back and that kind of thing. So I just wanted to let you know that I'm continuing with my usual schedule here, which has pretty much been one to two videos per month, depending on my life, depending on my work schedule, family stuff, vacation, how I'm feeling. Um, so I'm sticking with the norm and obviously we'll have a bit more in December when I do Vlogmas. I've created a Patreon account in February. I started it in February and I'm really enjoying that space. It is a place where I'm building a community and sharing and expanding on all of the things that I have shared here in the last little while that really interest me and I'm loving expanding on. So in addition to the knitting and crafting content, I share a lot more in the kitchen stuff, um, home organizing, home projects, art journaling, um, any other hobbies, what I'm reading, favorite things, all of that stuff. Um, it's a place where I can expand on all of that and share a lot more. So I understand that Patreon is not for everyone. There is so much free content available out there that I think there's room for everyone and everything. And I subscribe to a couple of people on Patreon, but I can't afford to subscribe to all of the ones that I wish I could. That is just, it's just life. So I just wanted to mention that I totally understand if Patreon is not your thing. 
and I wanted to let you know that I will still be here creating content and um, will be sharing my favorite things and my knitting and as much as I possibly can a couple of times a month. I hope that you will check out the By the Lakeside podcast group on Ravelry. Look for the post to enter the giveaway so that you can have a chance to win this prize. I'm really looking forward to sending it out to one of you. I will keep that open for a couple of weeks. I am going to clean up my knitting catastrophe here where I've pulled everything out. And I have a couple of favorite things that I'm going to share with you in a minute too. that life has slowed down so much for everyone in the last year things have changed drastically and in our household we are all pretty much home most of the time and I think there are some positives to that but I've been giving a lot of thought lately to how I spend my free time and how I could be spending it a little bit better I think a lot of my days get sucked up by scrolling through Instagram and even though I love Instagram it is a source of inspiration with creative feeds and I get to catch up with friends and see what people are making. I absolutely love it. I just think I need to scale back a little bit and focus on how I'm spending my time. And so earlier in the week, I pulled out this book that I've had for a really long time. I'm pretty sure that I shared this on a video last year. It's called Make Time. I made a little bit of progress and then I kind of tapered off and forgot about it. But I remember really enjoying this and it resonated with me and so I want to revisit it. It's called Make Time, How to Focus on What Matters Every Day. It's by Jake Knapp and John Zaratsky. And I'm going to review the parts that I already read because I want to refresh and then I'm going to try and finish this so that I can just focus my time a little bit better because there's so much that I want to be doing and I don't feel good when I don't know I'm just scrolling quiet time is great um, watching tv to me is great too but being on my phone so much does not feel so great so I'm going to be working on that and reading this book so that is a favorite one right now and I also ordered this recently and it's a new favorite. I have a small collection of inspirational books that I love to pick up here and there. This is a new one. It's Sarah Mitta's South of France, a sketchbook. And it is quite small, it's beautiful, and it is exactly the type of book that I like to just pick up and flip through. I think it almost takes the place of magazines for me. I don't really purchase magazines anymore and I used to love them. But I would much rather spend my time, my spare time, flipping through a beautiful book rather than not remembering what I was even looking at on my phone. So that is going to be a goal of mine for the next little while. But this is a really, really beautiful book. And it kind of inspires me. Sometimes it's just a nice escape. And sometimes it inspires me to get into my sketchbooks and do a little bit of art journaling or pull out some supplies and try something new. So I'm really enjoying those books. My hands have been so extremely dry again. And I've been very bad at um, using moisturizer on them. And so I decided to purchase a new cuticle cream or oil. I think this is an oil. Yeah. And I've been loving it. This is the L'Occitane Nourishing Nail and Cuticle Oil that I ordered on Sephora. And it is already making a huge difference. And I think I've only used it for a couple of days. So I can highly recommend this one. I am always looking for a good cuticle oil. And this one is not too messy. It just has like a little, it looks like a little paintbrush on the end. And 
It doesn't get everywhere and it works really, really well. Some of the other things I have been loving lately are rewatching a couple of programs on Netflix. The first one is The Gilmore Girls, which I watched when it originally aired. I think I used to watch it on Friday nights with my sisters and I have watched the reunion show. So I'm really enjoying finally rewatching that. And I've also been occasionally watching The Golden Girls, which makes me so happy. I love that show. Again, it's another one I used to watch with my whole family when I was younger. And I really love putting them on while I'm doing work in my studio because if I have a show on, I tend to pick up my phone a lot less. If I don't have, if I just have music on or I don't put a show on, I tend to pick up my phone every 5, 10, 15 minutes just to see what's going on and it's pointless. So I'm trying to get out of that bad habit. Another thing I've been really enjoying right now are my journals. I have been keeping up really well with my daily pages in my Hobonichi and loving all of the new supplies that I've been getting throughout the last couple of months from some of my favorite places, which I've shared before. So um, Wonder Pens and Paper Plus Cloth. I've gotten so many cute stickers and stamps that I'm loving. And the last thing is my new iced tea machine. So I am loving that. I'm making a pitcher every day and I'm just about to go and pour myself a cup of iced tea that I just brewed before starting this little chit chat with you. Thank you.